Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Chemistry and of course in this episode we are going to be looking at the shape the shape of orbitals Alright, the shape of orbitals. Please do not forget to like this video. Liking this video will make other students easily find this video. Abi, you know what made a pass. Please click on that like button now before you continue. Alright, click on it now. Alright, also do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Subscription will send notification. We'll go notify you for your phone. You will receive notification. See, we don't release new video. Okay, so why why do you not want to subscribe? So click on that red subscribe button just below this video. And do not forget to share this video. Eh? Please allow everybody to pass. Share to your friends, to your loved ones. Okay, let them also come and learn. And this tutorial is sponsored by the old 3 Schools Jam CBT Practice app. Okay, for a jam bag exam for a jump cbt exam all right you need a good jump cbt practice app and that is where the o3 school jump app comes in okay it is stuffed with all you need to succeed in your exam okay please let us see a question from the app we'll talk about the app later this is a 2021 question number 15 concerning the shape of orbitals how many orbitals are in the d sub shell okay how many orbitals are in the d sub shell a one b three C5, D7. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this question and many more questions, all right, at the end of the class, not before. So please go and download this application so that you can perform optimally well in your exam. All right, it has all the past questions, so you don't need to bother about past questions at all. All right, now, of course, there's a classroom that has lecture notes structured according to the jam syllabus. Many people don't tell you that you need jam syllabus to succeed in your exam. Hey, if you read, you study without your jam syllabus, you may either what overread. Eh? Or you may what misread. So reading will become too bulky for you. But once you read according to the syllabus, you know exactly what jam wants you to read under a particular topic. So all the lecture notes on the app have been structured according to the jam syllabus. Likewise, do not forget to uh, uh, know that also what they say UTME mock challenge on the application every Saturday, or every Saturday rather, you compete with your mates, win amazing prizes, get used to jump pass and likely exam question. What is more is that what you see your results release every Saturday. So it makes you get what, uh, uh, track your progress and get confidence towards the main exam. So please do not sleep on the app, go and download it immediately. Now the shape of what? Orbitals. Okay. I'll begin by saying that there are principally four types of orbitals that make up the K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q shells. Okay? If you followed us when we did electronic configuration, this will not be new to you, all right? All these shells will not be new to you at all. So if you have not watched electronic configuration, go back. From the first episode, I've been talking about electronic configuration. So if you, if you do not know anything about electronic configuration, go and watch it, all right? So this one, uh, I said by, by the azimuthal or quantum number. Okay, so the K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, uh, P, and Q shells, all right? There are four types of orbitals, okay, that make up all these shells. And there are, of course, the S the P, the D, and the F, okay? And what's this SPDF orbitals means? This S stands for what? Sharp. Take note, okay? It stands for sharp. This stands for what? Principal. Okay, this stands for diffuse. Okay, and this stands for fundamental. Okay, all right? So these are the four types of orbital that make up the K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q shares respectively. You must take note of this. The S is sharp. P, principal. D, diffuse. F, fundamental. If you want form song, if you form song with an SPDF, sharp, principal, diffuse, fundamental. Eh. So any way you will use to understand and remember them. Go and remember them, all right? So, sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. So, let us continue. Let us begin with what we did. First, what? Orbital, which is what? S orbital, which is what? Sharp. Let us look at the shape of the S orbital. The shape of the S orbital is spherical, okay? This S orbital is spherical, spherical in shape, in shape, all right? It's like this. It's spherical, what? In shape. Okay, so I'm showing you a, a picture showing what uh, the shape of what of an S orbital. Okay, that's how exactly how it looks. Okay, and of course, the among all the orbitals, among all the four orbitals, SPDF, SPDF, S orbital has the least number of electrons. 
Okay, the s orbital can only accommodate two electrons. Okay, it can only what accommodate what only two electrons. You must take note of that. Among all the four orbitals, s orbital has what the least number of what electrons that it can what accommodate, and that is what two electrons. Okay, I'll recap again. I said that what that the s orbital is spherical in shape. Okay, and what accommodate the least number of electrons among what the what the four orbitals and can only accommodate two electrons. Now, that is all about the s orbital. There's nothing more to know. All right, now let's talk about the p orbital. Now, the p orbital, on the other hand, is dumbbell in shape. Okay? It's dumbbell. Dumbbell. In shape. In shape. Okay? Something like this. All right? It's dumbbell in shape, like an hard glass. Like if you fold your hand. Okay? You fold your arms. All right? Folding of the arms is like this. You see it? Dumbbell what in shape. Okay, that is what the shape of what of the p what orbital. There are three types of what p orbitals. Okay, or we can call them what degenerate orbitals, or we can call them sub orbitals. All right, and of course they are what the p x, the p y, and the p what z respectively. Okay, these are the three types of what of p orbital. P x, the p y, and the p z. Each of these sub orbitals, okay, can accommodate two electrons each. The p orbital can accommodate two electrons. The y orbital can accommodate two electrons, and the p z orbitals can accommodate what two electrons, making it a total of what? How many electrons? A total of what? Six electrons. Okay, that's what can be accommodated by the what? By the p orbital. All right. So the p orbital can only what accommodate what six electrons. Take note of that. All right. So the p orbital, I will recap again. I say is dumbbell in shape. Okay, this is the shape. Okay, and I said was it there are three types: the px, the py, and the pz. All right, that's why you see when we are drawing our electron ball diagram. Okay, for the p orbital, we divide it into what three. All right, then we to start what putting in our electrons. Okay, 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 and it can only accommodate six electrons. Six electrons. That is the p orbital for you. Now let's go to the next orbital, which is what. Take note of the shape, so please. This one is dumbbell in shape. Dumbbell in shape. Now let us go to the d orbital. The d orbital, on the other hand, is double dumbbell in shape. Double dumbbell. Okay, the d orbital. D orbital, on the other hand, is what is double dumbbell in shape. Double dumbbell in shape. All right, it is double dumbbell in shape. Okay, I'm currently showing you okay the uh the shape, okay, the picture showing what the shape of what of the d orbital. Okay, it is double dumbbell in shape. Okay, and likewise, apart from that, you should know that what that the d orbital has what five sub orbitals. It have what it has what five sub orbitals. Okay, or we call them degenerate orbital, degenerate orbitals. Okay, as what five sub orbitals, or call them what the degenerate of orbitals, and they include, of course, the dxy, the dxz, the dyz, the square, the x square, uh, y square. Then the z what square. Okay. These are the what the degenerate what orbitals. Okay. Of what of the d what of the d what orbital. Okay. The degenerate. These are the five suborbitals. This one, the x, y, the x, z, the y, z, the square, the x square, y square, and what the z was square. Okay. So these are what the uh the, the five suborbitals of the d orbital. Okay. So please take note of that. Each of them can accommodate two electrons to each, two electrons each. Two electrons each, making it a total of what? Ten electrons total for the what? For the d orbital. Okay, so the d orbital can only accommodate what? Ten electrons. Can only accommodate ten electrons. So please take note of that. Take note of that. And that is all for the d orbital. That by the way. Now let us go to the what? To the f orbital. The f orbital is it has a complex shape. It has a complex shape. Okay, that is the f orbital. F orbital. Of f orbital, what has it has a complex shape, a complex what shape? Okay, so I say this one has a double dumbbell, right? Uh, the the this this one this dz square, okay? It has what a little different shape. Okay, you see double, you see dumbbell, all right? But it's 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 shaped like a donut. 
take note this dz square it is shaped like it. i'm showing you a diagram i'm taking you should be it seeing it already but right, so now the comp this a uh f orbit are having what a complex shape it has a complex shape and of course it has what seven sub orbitals seven sub orbitals or degenerates seven sub orbitals or degenerate as you may call it and of course each of those sub orbitals can accommodate two electrons each and that makes it what a total of what 14 electrons that's what can be accommodated by the f orbital all right so please take note of that and no peace okay so now we have seen the shape of s which is what spherical we must know their shape okay uh, uh sp dumb, dumbbell d double dumbbell f complex okay so those are the shapes you know the number of electrons they can accommodate all right you know what they are suborbitals all right so that is very necessary we're going to see some questions now where do we where you will ask that kind of question so please you don't need to fade anything when it comes to what organic chemistry one mark is very important you may just set it for me off a very simple question now if you don't know it you don't know it all right so please keep liking this video and of course drop comments drop comment encourage your commander Okay, some of you are selfish with comment, are selfish with like. Okay, you will not repost, you will not share, you will not share, you will not share. You say, my people, my, my village, you know they hear, give us no. My village, you know they hear, give you know they want me people pass. You better run for that village. So please keep on liking. Now, let us continue. We are not done, though. okay? We are not done with this sort of episode. All right, so now, what next? I want to see what, uh, I told you that the P orbital is what? Is dumbbell in shape. The P orbital is dumbbell in shape. Okay, let me show you how the P orbital is. It's dumbbell in shape. This side is the head. Okay, this side. This one is called what? This side. This is a P orbital. Okay, this is the head. This is the what? This is the side. Okay, so now, the S orbital, this one is P orbital. The S orbital does not have head. Or does it's spherical now, Abi? So it does not have head, it does not have a side. Okay, now when an s orbital, when an s orbital overlaps with any other orbital, let's say for example the p orbital, okay, overlaps. When an s orbital overlaps, when it overlaps with any other orbital, let's say for example like the p orbital, okay, let's say s orbital plus p orbital, the overlapping are going to have what? Okay, they are now going to have what your and so when they overlap like this, a strong bond is formed. A strong bond called the sigma bond. Sigma bond is what is formed, represented like this. Okay, so when an s orbital overlaps with a what with any other orbital, okay, like what well, like the p orbital as we are seeing here, okay, it leads to the formation of a very strong bond called what? the sigma bond. Take note of that. Now. Sigma, form, uh, sigma bond can also be formed when two p orbitals overlap head on. Okay, when two orb when two p orbitals overlap head on, sigma bond can also be formed. Let me show you an example. Okay, so this is the side. This is what this is the head. So when two p orbitals okay overlap. Okay, let's say we have this p orbital plus what overlapping with this p orbital to so now give us like this. Okay. Overlapping like this, okay? The bond that is formed, if they are overlapping head on, take note, okay? If they are overlapping what head on, this is the head, okay? They are overlapping head on, it leads to the formation of a sigma bond. Sigma bond, all right? So when two p orbital overlap head on, head on, take note, all right? It leads to the formation of a sigma bond, okay? But when two p orbital overlap, laterally when they overlap laterally okay that is what sideways okay let's say like this that was uh a p orbital like this then plus another one like this overlapping this is like eight abby then you now have something like this all right okay so this is what lateral what overlapping when you say they're overlapping what laterally laterally or what sideways Okay, so this one is what sideways or overlapping. When they overlap sideways, it leads to the formation of what of a pi bond. Pi bond. Okay, pi bond is formed. That is what pi 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 bond is formed when two p orbitals overlap overlap what laterally or what or sideways. But if they overlap what head on, a sigma bond is formed. You must know this 
and use it to work to no peace. Okay, so in the last episode, we hinted about pi bond and sigma bond. All right, now the carbon to carbon bonds, the carbon to carbon double bond that is found in alkenes, carbon to carbon double bond that is found in what in alkenes. Okay, it has what I told you in the, in the last slide, it has what one pi bond and what one sigma what bond. Okay, take note of that now during reactions. This pi bond is broken down, okay, but the sigma bond is unaffected because, like I told you in the last slide as well, that the sigma bond is what is way stronger than the pi bond, it's stronger than the pi bond, okay. So, during reaction, the sigma bond is what uh, is unaffected, but the pi bond is what is broken down, okay. So, now also the carbon to carbon triple bond, okay, found in what in alkynes. Alkynes. We are still going to talk about, talk about alkynes, alkynes, and I can know both of you cannot wait. Ah, this organic chemistry now about this is see this is perfect organic chemistry. So if and this is even your syllabus, so don't joke with it. Okay, so now the carbon to carbon triple bond that is found in alkynes, all right, has what two pi bonds, pi bonds, and what one was sigma bond. Okay, now during reactions. These pi bonds are what they are broken down, okay. But this sigma bond is not what affected, okay. And that's what uh sequence with the fact that I said about that the sigma bond are stronger than the pi bond, okay. But of course, definitely, I was comparing them with the arkanes in the, what, the last episode, and I told you that this triple bond found in arkanes, okay, is stronger than what is stronger than the single bond found in arkane, okay. And I compared it to with a with a what with a, with holding three barrels or three pencils. It is easier for you to break one barrel than for you to what to break what three what barrels. Abi, it's easier. All right, so that's why this triple bond in alkynes is stronger than what this single bond in what in alkane. Okay, but this sigma bond that is found, okay, in what in alkanes is stronger than what than this what uh uh pi bonds. It's, it's, it's stronger than the pi bonds that are what found in what in the what in the alkynes. All right, so please take note of what. Of that okay, sigma bond is stronger than pi bonds. Okay, so this is where we are going to what uh close the shop for this class. In the next episode, we are going to what talk about another interesting what part as we continue our study into organic chemistry. Now, let us quickly see a question from the application, and we are done. 2021 number 15, which says how many orbitals are in the D sub shell A1, B3, C5, D7. Okay, obviously, we say what the D orbital has what five sub orbitals, so that would be what option C5. <clears throat> Let's see 2004 number 33. The shape of the S orbital is A elliptical, B spiral, C circular, D spherical. The shape of, of the S orbital is what is spherical, all right. So, uh, this are many more questions on this app. Go and download the app and start practicing your way to success. My name remains Master T, your grand commander, all right. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.